my bio is slightly out of date now. Um, so I am a trainee optometry now, completing my training year. But I do have a, a very strong interest in sleep history, contemporary sleep history. And uh, please do forgive me, I do know I was going to be here at two. Um, unfortunately, stuck in traffic and all, but um, thank you to everybody who is here anyway. Right, so before I begin, uh, as Whitey mentioned, I have spoken at the 2019 conference uh, and last year's conference. The first uh, time I spoke, I kind of looked at the political history of Dr. Jukti Singh Chauhan on the far left, um, who lived in the United Kingdom and stayed most notably in exile for 21 years from 84 to 2001 and stayed in Bayswater, which isn't too far away. Now, the middle, my, my um, sort of article last year and my presentation looked at the Khalasan activities in Ecuador, which happened from 1985 to 87. So for today, I, I thought it would be a, a very, very worthwhile to go back to the very beginning and to go back to, to the late 60s and the early 70s to look at the Punjab scenario, but more importantly, talk about what happened here in the UK. Now, a lot of the history which I will be talking about, or will be looking at what happened in South Law, and there will be links to Central Gurdwara, Karlsruhe, and Shepherd's Bush, and also a lot of history from the Midlands, where, where I'm originally from. Now, a few of the personalities which we have here all lived in, in the UK for quite a long period, and they were all kind of members of the Chilomani Akali Dal, which was the sort of predominant Sikh political party once upon a time, which obviously now it unfortunately perhaps isn't. Okay, now before I, I kind of go into, into today, I do want to uh, dedicate my lecture to Bhai Babir Singh Lahti, who unfortunately passed away two weeks ago. Now, I met Ankaji back in 2019, Jasmine Singh had accompanied me on that occasion and I'm sure he, he had a lot of fond memories of, of our discussion and, uh, and sort of our, what we talked about. And in my hand we can see a, a Khalistan passport, a prototype too, which was made um, in Toronto in Canada uh, and were made by Bundeep Singh Sodhi. Okay? Now, we do, if we want to understand Sikh politics post-partition, we do need to go back to Master Dalla Singh. Now, in terms of what I bring forward to you today, there will be a lot of quotations from many, many different documents. What we've got over here are, are what I found at the National Archives in Kew Gardens. So you can definitely read uh, the quotations here. Now, back in 19, I do remember Harmanji had given a talk on Master Dara Singh and perhaps put a, a, a verdict. And definitely in, in contemporary Sikh history circles, many people perhaps point fingers at Master Dara Singh um, that perhaps he should have gone for an independent Sikh state in 1947, or perhaps he should have worked the Punjabi Subha movement slightly different, away from the linguistic side to more sort of uh, religious political. Okay, and so Master G passed away in 67, um, and, and you, can, you can read what the British High Commissioner in New Delhi had said at that particular time, that um, his demand for autonomous Sikhistan whose influence, influence at the moment is very little, might consider, considerably increase. And that's exactly what happened after 1968. Now, if we go back to 1966, um, we had uh, an Akali leader called Santhata Singh, who was originally number two to Master Dara Singh, but eventually he came to predominance during the Punjabi Subha movement. Now, he actually toured the UK and met many, many different figures, many, many different notable figures, we do have a photograph of him outside the Guru Nanak Guru Ghat in Sebevik, who are, I believe, celebrating 50, 50 year, 60 years now, actually, from the foundation of the Guru Ghat. And this particular photograph is from 1966. Now, in terms of the Agali Dal, now, there would always be a, a, a party, or a branch in the Midlands, and one would be perhaps more London-based. And in this particular photograph, we can see Gianni Bakshi Singh on the far left, and on the far right, we can see Jayan Singh Panji, who you may remember from the initial slide which I showed you. Now, Gyaniji on the far left, who we will be talking a bit more about later, he was a general secretary, and Jayan Singh Panji on the far right, he uh, was the actual president of, of the political party when Sant Singh came to the United Kingdom. 
And so at that initial junction, as I've mentioned, central Gurdwara Kalsjata, which was originally the Maharaja of Binda Singh Dhamsala, that's where the Akali Dal had its main sort of headquarter, which then kind of changed over to the London side in, in South Hall, and then to, to Birmingham as well. And that was actually formed on September 8th in 1968. And bringing a bit of my own family history, um, being brought up in Warsaw, my family have been there for many, many years. We have Santapata Singh seated um, on the far left, and we do have my granddad, who was General Secretary of the Guru Nanak Sikh Temple in Warsaw, and uh, he's literally carrying out the role of, of a General Secretary here. Now, during my PowerPoint, I do have a lot of photographs and a lot of videos, which I perhaps won't make any of you fall asleep. Okay. which were the words of Jatadar Darshan Singh Thurman, who was a, a very notable Akali leader who reached prominence in the 1920s and was very, very close to many, many political figures back in, in the 60s and 50s. Now, this particular demonstration actually happened in London back in 69. Now, as I've mentioned, post-partition Punjab and obviously Master Dara Singh, the Punjabi Subba movement, which looked to perhaps create a linguistic Punjabi Sikh state. Uh, unfortunately, that didn't, well, it did happen eventually, as we will look at, but it, it didn't happen overnight. And then we have one figure named Jatadar Darshan Singh Thurman, as I've mentioned. Now, the Akali leaders at that particular time, they would go on hunger strikes, but many would perhaps say no, and they would come away from the hunger strike and wouldn't perhaps complete, complete their will. Now, Jatadar Ji stood up uh, and continued this hunger strike and hunger strike to the very end. Okay, and here's a photograph which I've got from the Times of India as well. Now, most notably, Dr. Johan is very, very close to Jatadar Darshan Sikh Bernamad, and that's when we perhaps notice his main entry. Now, Dr. Johan was a finance minister in the Punjab and later became the general secretary, secretary of the Shri Akalidad in back in Punjab before he made his way here. Now, this particular photograph is from 1975, but that's actually at the Havelock Road Gurukar, uh, the Singh Sabha, South Road Gurdwara. And on the far left, we have uh, Sardar Puran Singh. Now, if you do read the little news clipping which I have over to my left, it will give you a bit of an idea of who he was, and you will remember his photograph from the very beginning. Now, on the far right, we have a, ge a gentleman called Sardar Sohan Singh Akali. Now, if you, next time you do go to, to the Guru Nanak, well, Singh Sabha Gurdwara in South Hall, and you look at the Lunger Hall, you will have a huge Lunger Hall board, and you will spot, spot his name um, listed in there. So especially when we talk about Sikh circles, we have many, many different Sikh personalities, and often there can obviously be sort of uh, problems and um, sort of disputes. And often, if we look at our community, we often separate into different organisations, different groups, which, have, which we've been doing since the Sikh missile period. Now, on this particular occasion, all of the Sikhs came together and they elected Bai Gordon Singhji as the president. You should be able to see that here. We've got Bai Gordon Singh for the elected. Behind him, we've got some Gordon Singh, Jim Mark and me, all of them, and Bai Gordon Singh for the right of a job. Now, this is a, from a, a, a protest in 1969, prior to Darshan Singh Bodhaman going on the hunger strike and eventually passing away. Okay, and that continued and continued. The Punjabi Supa demand was not met, and Sikhs continued to demonstrate here in London, and the Akali Dal carried out many, many demonstrations and many, many protests, and, uh, and we do have a little clipping here from the Times. Um, where, he, where, where the protest was due to the unfair treatment of Sikhs by the Indian government.
Now, one more point which I do want to bring forward today is um, about Indira Gandhi. Now, many of us know back in 1978, we know the role of uh, Sant Baba Kartar Singh Di Pindarale in terms of when, when they were sort of uh, at a convention where Guru Sahib was present and obviously the Ani Kartar Singh um, didn't perhaps get up when uh, Indira Gandhi came into Guru, Guru Maharaj's Darbar. But what I want to mention on this particular point is that the Akalis in the 1970s, whenever Indira Gandhi would come here, they would demonstrate very fierce, fearlessly. Perhaps they may not have got close to her, but they definitely put a lot of pressure on Indira Gandhi and made every trip to kind of a Sikh, where wherever there were Sikhs, they would demonstrate very, very, very much. And that was back in 1971, so way before 1984, and even Dr. Johan, who kind of forecasted uh, the assassination of Indira Gandhi in June 1984. And to go on a, a little bit of a tangent, um, so we are talking about the demand of an autonomous Sikh state and independence of homeland, Palestine. Now, definitely, we've talked about Dr. Chauhan coming from the Punjab to the UK, but what about the UK Sikhs who are living here now? What connection would they have back to the Punjab? Uh, and what we're talking about on, on this particular bit here in 1969, Many of you may have heard when the Sada were perhaps banned uh, on transport, that Sikhs weren't allowed to wear their Dastara on buses, uh, and there were many, many disputes related to, to Sikhs in, in workplaces. On that occasion, the Indian government perhaps didn't do much at all, uh, which is why many of the Sikh leaders had realized that perhaps, perhaps the Indian government isn't helping us at all. Perhaps we do need to go forward and create our own independent Sikh state. And that was a key injunction for the early Sikh homelanders to continue the way they went. And then we come down to 1971. And what we have here is an ad advertisement in the New York Times, which actually appeared on page 12. And this pr pretty much is a very, very historical document. And it is now 50 years old. So we're talking about 2021, we're talking about 1971. And many of you perhaps voted in the Khalistan referendum recently or, or, or perhaps planning to do. So it's been 50 years now since a document has actually been processed and, and delivered. Uh, and what happened on, on this particular occasion is a demonstration was actually called outside the United Nations headquarters in New York. Now the Times of India reports that very, very few Sikhs had actually attended that particular convention, but that's when things had started to change very, very quickly. Now, in 1971, many of you may know, there was an India-Pakistan battle of war, war which had kind of erupted. Now, the Shromani Akali Dal, back in the Punjab, Dr. Chauhan was the General Secretary, and he was perhaps given the ultimatum, ultimatum by different political members to, to go back to the UK to try and formalise links to different countries and to try uh, on Gurnan Devji's good group to go back to Pakistan and to get the keys for Nangana Sahib and, uh, and all the other sort of different Gurdams which, which are there. Now, over at the top of the photograph, we have Yerni Bakshi Singh, we have Dr. Johan and Jan Singh Panchi again. So, the two gentlemen from Birmingham who are seen here departing a flight um, from in, in Lahore. <laughs> Now that particular trip to Dungana Sahib in 1971 had led to kind of a diplomatic storm between India, Pakistan and, and even in England. 
Now, later on, so Gianni and Judy, we talked about in that particular video. Santa Singh, who we talked about right at the beginning, he passed away in 1972. Now, the Akalis here in the UK were very, very well connected to him. So Gyanidji had returned back to the Punjab to attend um, Gyanidji's funeral. Now, unfortunately, back in Angana Seb, they had given many, many sort of speeches talking about his independence in homeland, and they gave many, many fiery kind of conversations to officials who they met um, on that occasion. Now, many of us talk about Jafdar Singh Johal, and even if we look about in the 80s, there are many, many sort of different figures who have gone back to Punjab and have perhaps been captured and kept there for a while. Now, Gyanidji was actually, well, arrested there in Punjab and was kept in detention for a whole year. And Gyanidji's grandson mentioned to me that um, he was only freed after a year due to British kind of pressure on the Indian government to allow Gyanidji to come back. Uh, and so literally he stayed, I mean he was a postman, and, and he stayed in Punjab in jail, incarcerated for a whole year. We do have a photograph of Gyanidji on the far right, which is from Dudley Town Hall. Uh, and it's a photograph of him receiving a, a, a new dasad from fellow members of the Akali Dal here in the UK. So that happened, Gyanidji came back in 1972, and the Sikhs kind of got back together, um, the ones who were very much involved in the Akali Dal, um, and definitely the Midlands group was seen as perhaps the more hardcore sort of uh, in personality and in terms of ideas, and they were very, very much driven for a complete independent Sikh homeland, which obviously led to a bit of a shift between the South Hill group, who were perhaps more moderate. Okay, and May 22nd in Lamington's Bar, um, the Sikhs moved for a government in exile, which was officially formed in 1972. 200 Sikhs had met in Lamington uh, and passed the declaration for the creation of an independent Sikh homeland. Um, and obviously, in 1984, post the attack uh, and siege at Chitabar side, another government in exile was formed, as we talked about um, back in my previous presentation. Right, so as Wadi mentioned, um, 
I am a trainee optometrist by day, but when it comes to, my, to the night time, I am writing as much as I can and reading as much as I can as well. I do actually have a website now, um, subranjitsrahi.com. Um, so my granddad had used the, the last name Rahi as opposed to Uppal, which I've kind of adopted. Uh, and he was actually a general secretary of a faction of the Shromni Akali Dal back in Birmingham. Now what I've talked about today, it's, it's in a very condensed nature. Um, I hope you have enjoyed it uh, as well. Any, in terms of any sort of supplementary kind of written articles which I've written about on here. So my website, photography, history, uh, some poetry and some general blog kind of posts which I've written. Uh, feel free to, to have a look as well. Um, now, at the moment, in terms of all the research which I've done, we do have a, an active Instagram page at the moment, um, <coughs> Tribes of the Khalistan Archive, which over the next few years, whatever we've collated, we look to hopefully make a database and, uh, and to get that going. Um, I, I do run an Instagram page called The Semesha Book Club, where if I do find anything related to Sikh politics, contemporary Sikh history, any photographs, I, I kind of look onto there. Now, it is an ongoing project. The end goal is to perhaps write uh, some sort of novel documenting all of my findings uh, in a very clear, concise way, but opening that sort of market up for not only Sikh readers, but for the whole world to kind of, to kind of understand and to see. And I think it does a lot of justice for all of those who came before us. Now, unfortunately, in my quest for finding out all of these particular individuals and and to get more information. It's been very, very tricky. Now, unfortunately, many of those listed here uh, have passed away 10, 15, or even Gandhiji passed away in the early 80s. Um, so it's been very, very tricky to, to try and find out more information. Uh, but it's really interesting to, to note what we actually have in our Godwane libraries. I mean, often I've been picking up pamphlets which have been left by individuals and, and, and they've been exactly what I wanted. Um, so, I mean, these six individuals, very few would have heard of them. I mean, Darshan Singh Tatla has written about them very, very briefly um, in, in his Sikh history, history books. But beyond that, I mean, these names have been largely forgotten, which is very, very unfortunate. And, and even when we did kind of start the, the Aston University Khalistan Society back in 2018, we, we perhaps didn't really have uh, that exposure, um, but I, I made sure that we were going to find out the truth and that the movement for independence of Kongland has been going on for a very, very long time and it will continue to completion. So, I mean, I bow my head in front of these great supermen who are pictured here and hopefully their stories will be told and hopefully more individuals will rise up uh, and will fit these particular positions and, uh, and hopefully the Khalsa Fund will flourish uh, in the near future and, uh, and yeah, God God Khalsa. Bye, Rujika Khalsa, bye, Rujiki. Time for some more questions. Making it as always open, guys. Feel free to post up on there. Any questions you want to ask directly to Simranji, feel free to put your hand up and ask away. If there's anything you'd like to get us started. Perfect, we'll go to the first question. Meter. Not specific to your research, however, how did you start your Palestine Society? Um, I mean, as Baji mentioned, um, I, I was pretty, pretty involved at university, um, so I studied optometry, um, and I knew that uh, I wanted to perhaps pursue into these different areas, which perhaps a Sikh wouldn't normally. I mean, generally, I mean, we've got a lot of uni students here, they'd probably want to go into Sikh society, and that's pretty much it, and the university's finished. But no, I mean, I went down the Optic Society Road, um, and then I started getting more into Sikh history and politics during the Labour Society. But then what I found at Aston, I mean, when I initially joined university, I kind of expected that uh, the Sikh Society would be like the Sikh Students' Federation of Bayan Leeson. So I kind of had that idea that I would find many, many like-minded Sikh individuals who were passionate and perhaps who wanted to go above and beyond and to actually do something big. I mean. Aston University is, is very, I mean, it's, it's in a very, very sort of a, a very Sikh populated area. And so I kind of wanted that outreach to different world about it. I wanted there to be an academic sort of program 
uh, which, which we were very happy to have Ranjit Singh and, and Harvinder Singh who fulfilled that sort of role. So whatever I felt was, wasn't in the Sikh society, I kind of brought to, to the podium. Uh, and even back in when the Nishan conference started, we actually had our own conference called the Punjab Crisis of Human Rights, where we wanted to invite academics, we wanted to invite young people, and we wanted to invite people from different marginalised groups to come together uh, and let's talk about our issues and hopefully make a mind map and go forward and bring about real change. But unfortunately, I mean, the Sikh society perhaps didn't fulfil fulfill that for me. But um, I, I didn't want to go to university and uh, complain about Sikh so, but not do, do anything about it at all. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the movement, as, you, as I've talked about today, I mean, in Birmingham, it's been very, very big from its in inception. And, uh, and that fire needed to keep going, but in the correct way, uh, which is diplomatic, political, and, uh, and yeah, and hopefully these individuals would be very happy of our, our achievements. Next question. Uh, what was your motivation to learn about this topic specifically? Um, yeah, I mean, growing <coughs> up, I mean, when I was younger, I was very, very fascinated about all of these young individuals who would perhaps look like me, uh, and would be perhaps giving up their university degree to, to fight in the Dharam of the Morja or to continue the struggle for an independent Sikh homeland or fight against, it, fight against the injustice. Now I do remember back in, in year, year four, I picked up a book at my local library um, called The Gallant Defender by A.R. Darshi, who many of you may have heard about or have read. And I remember there was one particular photograph of Bayer Reek Singh and Bayer Mendel Singh Sundu where there were these very charismatic young individuals um, and that picture is still in, in the back of my head. So as I mentioned, I mean, I came to university hoping I would be joining a branch of the Sikh Students Federation. Um, and, and then, yeah, from that particular point on. Now, we all talk about 1984, uh, um, passion, I mean, our spirits get perhaps quite lively. Uh, we, we go to a yearly rally and that's pretty much it. We vent our anger on one day and that's pretty much it. Or we go on social media and make a tweet. But I, I wanted to go down a different way. I wanted to, to, to go more into it and to question, are these people on our world water stages, are, are they telling me what's right? Or are they trying to inflame our emotions? As many political leaders have done um, in the past. Uh, and I didn't want to be one of those kind of shouty, shouty individuals. I wanted to look at it methodically, work out what actually happened, come to a conclusion, and then obviously be very firm in my mind that where I'm going is the correct road. Um, and, and yeah, hopefully, hopefully that kind of answers. Uh, right but yeah, no, I mean, in any particular period of Sikh history, now I started in the 1980s, but I found the post-partition Sikh politics more interesting. <coughs> in the 1950s, 60s, 70s, I found a, a, a lot more sort of, it's undocumented history. Like I mentioned today, I mean, only one past historian has written much about these figures. Uh, so it's undocumented history. And as a, a, a young sort of historian, finding undocumented history is kind of, kind of, yeah, it's a good feeling. Um, yeah. Next question from Mentimeter. What are your thoughts on the new proposed map for Khalistan? Right, now for me, now we, we've had a quick look at the map here. Um, now, uh, I am of a sort of, a, in terms of the map that we've got here, now that's made by our, our elders, the Vindha Singh Pramad back in 1955 in London. Um, but one kind of problem we will always have is Sikh population. Now, the Punjabi Subha movement, um, if it were, if the Punjabi Subha was awarded in what the Sikhs had wanted, we talk about the Zilka, even Chandigarh, I mean, if perhaps all of those were, were solved, then history would have been very, very different. So I would, uh, it's very, very difficult. I mean, even when I was putting a vote in at the referendum, the same idea came to me. We're living in the UK, but we're voting on something so far away, which perhaps we may never ever go to. Um, so for me, I mean, from what our elders have given, that's a map which I, I would consider to be good, or even the Punjabi Supa, uh, the initial kind of the, the areas which have the Punjabi speaking areas, they should be included in, well, in, in Palestine now, um, no longer in India. But um, in terms of map, um, 
it comes down to the people. It comes down to the Punjabi people. Now, I've only been back to Punjab twice when I was very, very young. Now, I don't anticipate going back anytime soon. Um, so, yeah, I'm not going to be able to answer that, really. But uh, it, it does seem quite far-fetched, really, uh, in terms of the map which, which SFJ have kind of delivered. But, I mean, every Sikh will have their own opinion on any, any topic, and if that's kind of the map which they want to propose, one of the might be uh, next question. Do you think the Sikh Empire and the Maharaja Ranjit Singh was a model of what Khalistan should be? Right. Now, now <coughs> a lot of the Akalis, they had, had a similar kind of motive. Now, they wanted to follow Maharaja Ranjit Singh's kind of, kind of uh, ha, as how secular it perhaps was. Uh, but in 1984, uh, I mean, certain different groups who were perhaps more aligned in Sikh teachings, they had perhaps proposed a more theocratic Kind of state. Now, in terms of Maharaja and Deep Singh, now that was many, many times ago. Now, I, I always kind of find it quite difficult to connect to that particular period, as it was too long ago. Um, and I definitely, we all talk about Maharaja and Deep Singh. I mean, many people have put, put Maharaja and Deep Singh in their, in their songs, and they talk about it, and uh, even the BBC kind of did like an interview uh, or a poll to find out who, who the greatest leader of all time was. But uh, but really, I mean, in terms of the ideal Sikh state, now, I, I do remember um, Bhai Ravinder Singh actually mentioned the idea of a Sikh state by Lal Singh Yanni. Uh, that's one particular book. But even a, another book called The Case for Republic of Khalistan, written by Sujan Singh, that talks a, a bit about um, the formation of, of how an independent Sikh state will look. But ultimately, it comes back down to the people as well. Now. Uh, I'm an optometrist, um, I mean, uh, I'm not an economist, I, I'm not somebody who will be able to tell you how to take your large or how it would look, um, but perhaps if anybody in the audience is, they might be able to take that question. Um, yeah. uh, are there any female Sikh activists you can mention who were part of the movement or other Sikh-related movements? Okay, yeah. Now, after 1984, um, well, very, very soon after, after tensions perhaps cooled down, people had gone back into their homes, then you kind of had a very, very few individuals who would perhaps go to rallies and go to demonstrations on a regular. And for many of the photographs which I see from Punjab Times, Des for Des, or whatever I've got in my private collection, there are, you will always find females in, in those particular photographs. Um, now, luckily, uh, back in Aston, when we were actually Doing well, obviously part of the Khalistan society. Um, we we had pretty much, a, a, um, besides me, when, when I kind of stepped down, we had pretty much a, a whole female committee. Um, so I mean, back in the eighties, I mean, uh, and even prior, I mean, it was more of a a, a male dominant kind of kind of side here in the UK. Uh, but in Punjab, from from the early periods, yes, yeah. Gyan Singh Radewale, uh, um, his daughter was very, very, um, very, well, I mean, she was an Akali leader as well, <coughs> very, very entwined in Punjab politics, and he even Dr. Rajinder Kaur, who was Master Tara Singh's daughter, and they were very, very much involved. So back then, in the 60s and 70s, back in Punjab, I mean, the I, I mean, gender perhaps didn't make too much of a difference. So you did have many, many notable um, Sikh females. One book which I have, um, written by Gurdath and Bal Singh called uh, The Illustrated History of Sikhs. Now, if you look into that particular book, I mean, you will have many of the Akali leaders, you have many, many politicians, but you'll also have a lot of Sikh females. I mean, I do remember reading about a lady who's written a, a poetry book in English. Uh, you did have your politicians, well, your activists. Um, uh, and so, yeah, I, I mean, you will find individuals, but it's about, well, it's about finding them, really. Uh, in the mainstream, you're only going to find the same individuals, really. I mean, even in terms of my history, I, I've had to look into the Times of India archive. Now, I'm very lucky. One of my, one of my uh, companions who's currently working on the archive um, situated in Toronto. Now, his particular university had, had access to, to the Times of India and all of these other kind of newspapers. Unfortunately, at Aston, we didn't sort of have a Times of India. And, and even if I did want to request anything related to history, I would get an email back saying, you study optometry, we're not allowed to get you anything uh, related to history. 
but it's simply binding. Now, when I started my, my research, I mean, I, I Googled a, a Khalistan dollar, uh, and that came up on eBay, and I ended up buying one. And that kind of just led me into a kind of a maze, and, and here we are uh, a few years later. So if, if, you, if you have that interest, if you want to find some information, you've got to go, you've got to go about it. I mean, the National Archives, we've got tons of information. Um, I mean, even this, but this in terms of uh, in Salvador, they've got an archive. So it's simply about finding, 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 finding the answers to your questions. Final question: What was the relationship and level of dialogue between uh, Jagjit Singh Chauhan and other homeland leaders, some of your Nelson? Right now, um, in terms of the Six Shoots Federation, the All India Six Shoots Federation, by Dhirmendra Singh Sandhu, he was General Secretary of uh, of the Six Shoots Federation. Now he had actually sent a letter over to Dr. Chauhan uh, and said, "Whatever you're doing is great." And that particular letter was actually published in the Khalistan News, uh, which is a newspaper which was delivered around pretty much the whole world, but well, mainly in the UK. But um, in that particular letter, he gave support. Um, to Dr. Johan and for the movement. And the Six Students Federation actually, it, was, it wasn't a referendum as such, but they had passed a declaration that we're going to be striving for an independent Sikh homeland. So they made an initial step there. Now, in terms of an interview which I've seen of Dr. Johan, he mentions in 1979 they had met at uh, a Papsa Holla celebration, or a celebration in, in Mandela, I can't remember which one. And that's where Sanjay Nesingji and Dr. Johan actually sat down and they spoke. And Dr. Chan had mentioned the idea that um, here's what we're doing. And even back in 77, actually, Baba Santa Singh Nehang, um, who many would know, um, who kind of carried out the Gal Seva of, of, of Shri Agal Dr. Tokstri in 1984, they had actually formed an alliance. Um, and their political party was called Bant Khalsa back in 78. Uh, but coming back to 79, so Sanjay Nesingji and uh, the other Akali leaders and Dr. John had met. And Dr. John mentioned that here's what we're doing in the UK, here's what we need to be going for. And Sanjay Nesingji replied to Dr. Johan saying that, Dr. G, I did die in here. It's not time, it's not time to, to, go, to go down that particular road. Now, um, that's an idea of, of their connection, but even in terms of so as I've mentioned, um, if we look at the headquarters outside of Punjab relating to the movement, it would have been in Bayswater, 12 Talbot Road, uh, which isn't very, very far from here, which is near Paddington. And that would have been perhaps the headquarters for the movement. And obviously Dr. Chauhan was elected the president of the Council of Khalistan, the international wing of the Bunda Committee, which was formed in, uh, in 1986. Uh, and even Beyond that, but from the interviews which I've carried out, it's pretty evident that the connection between the Sikh freedom fighters and the generals back <coughs> in Punjab and the individuals sitting here, they were very, very well connected. And uh, any step that had perhaps happened back in the Punjab, the communication was very, very rapid and, uh, and individuals would find out pretty, pretty quick here. So definitely the connection would have been there. Um, and especially as I've mentioned, Dr. Johan, went back um, to Punjab in, 70, in 77 and stayed there till 79, after the Indira Gandhi's emergency, when Moraji Desai came into power. Uh, so definitely the connection between Dr. Saab and the Sikh Shoots Federation is pretty evident, but as he was an Akali Dal leader, uh, the connection between Sajjan Singhji and him was very, very strong. And even um, in a Reading newspaper, so Dr. Johan, his older brother, lived in Reading. And I, I do remember reading an article mentioning where Dr. Jahan had said that Sanjay Nesingji had given his final message to Dr. Jahan and said, now we, we need to, to strive for, for the creation of our independent homeland. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right, would you go?